All right. What I'm going to do, guys, as we get started here today, is I'm going to uh, I'm going to just mute Hang on to the call. We're going to mute everybody, and then I will be calling on people. Or if you want to, if you would like to communicate with us, then then unmute yourself at any time. Right. I do want to talk to you. It's just hard when we get so many people on here. I know that yesterday we have about 40, 40 something, uh, 40 something people registered for this. So once a lot of people get on here and someone the other day had chirping birds in the background and I was like, <laughs> David White, I was like, where's the birds coming from? Who's got the birds in the house? And I was doing a live just a minute ago and, and uh, the guy's dog was barking and going crazy. So, <laughs> So you just never know, folks. All right, I have, I have time for us to get started, and uh, I'm actually really excited about doing this webinar with you today because, because this is a lesson that I actually gave my team this morning. Every morning I meet with my team at eight thirty. Okay, every morning I meet with my team at eight thirty, and the purpose, the purpose of me meeting with the team. Is, is not to teach them everything that I know, but to re-inspire them, to activate their prey drive every day, to get them in a forward posture. Now, I was doing this long before this virus came along, but, but now it's even more important, in my opinion, to keep people in a positive mindset, to keep people in a forward offensive attack. So one of the things, so what we're gonna talk about today is how do you turn fear, which is an emotion, into cash? Okay, and I wanna make sure you understand what I'm saying here. I'm not saying take advantage of people. I'm not saying prey, prey on people that are scared. What I'm saying is how do you take your fear, right? How do you take your fear and convert it to, to action? How do you take your fear and convert it to, to movement? How do, you under, how do you solve a problem for a person that they would be willing to exchange their money for your solution in today's in today's market. So when you think about this, I want to start with just one very clear principle. Money actually changes hands when problems are solved. Okay. And, and if you can show a person right now during this period that you can solve a problem for them. Okay. Then they will exchange money with you. Okay. Just remember this. So money, money plays into this equation uh, when a problem is solved. Okay, so when you're selling to people right now, like we've got people that are selling to hospitals right now, and I was on the phone coaching people this morning, and basically they said the hospitals have told them, unless you can help us with this problem, right? <laughs> unless you can help us with these three problems, don't call us, don't email us, don't try to sell anything to us. Now, in that scenario, here's what I want you thinking about. One of the things I've been studying during this cycle is my business model. How do I diversify my business model so it's, it's recession proof? How do I diversify my, my business model so it has multiple flows of income? How do I create, how do I not be reliant on one stream of income? What can I do to create strategic partnership or affiliates? What can I do to stimulate? What can I do to create? Okay, because if I only had one stream of income or one flow of income and that in, income would work, it, it would actually expose that my business model is weak. You need, you need diversification across your business model. You need to know that you can make money in different ways. What if, what if this happens again? What if something else happens again? So we start off by understanding this is a period to study your business model. If you're afraid, it could be because I only got one flow of income right now, and that's a problem for me. Now, the good news is you're going to learn from this, and you're going to begin to build multiple flows of income. You're going to learn to build additional flows of income. You're going to learn to diversify your portfolio. You're going to learn, right? Like you're going to start thinking, okay, I can't rely just on this one thing. Now, here's an example. You know, I speak for a living, but right now there's no speaking engagements. Well, the speaking engagements drive the leads. Okay, when I go out and speak, right, that drives all my leads. So if I can't speak, then I can't drive leads that way. So, so what have I done? I've adapted. I've done more webinars, more Facebook Lives, more Instagrams, more uh, virtual coaching summits, more anything I can do to get in front of people to generate interest and enthusiasm and more than anything, share my expertise. So we're, we've been taking these webinars that I've been doing, putting them right to YouTube so we can feed people, right? And using them in the sales cycle. So, so for all the people I've been working that are in my farm club right now, 
that have shown interest in my services. I've been taking these webinars where, I, where it allows me to coach for an hour, no different than if I was in, in, in Houston, Texas, or in New Jersey, or in Nashville. Um, there's no difference there. And then I've been using them saying, hey, I know, I, I know you couldn't get on this webinar, watch this. It's a creative way to drive leads. And I would tell you, and my sales team can probably tell you this, that we probably still driven 200 to 300 leads over the last couple of weeks. And that's with, without me being able to go anywhere or speak. So where there's a will, there's a way. My granddad taught me, if you got a want to, you can find a how to. Okay, so, so let's get started on this and I'm gonna call on some people as we go. How do you turn fear into cash? Well, let's first step back and look at what fear is. Because <clears throat> this is very important. Fear is an unpleasant emotion that is created by a belief that something or someone is gonna harm me in the future. Now, I wanna pull out a few key words here because I like looking at the meaning of the word. Fear is an emotion. Uh, anxiety, worry, disappointment, anger. These are all emotions, okay? These emotions can actually be used to, to convert, okay? It's like, it's like being addicted to something. If you have an addiction to something that's, that can be a negative thing, well, you could take that same addiction and put it into something positive. You can take that same energy and put it into something positive. Well, the same thing is true of fear. So fear is an unpleasant emotion created by belief that something's going to harm me. Now look at the words created by belief. Where was that belief created by the way? Right, Stephanie, I want you to think about where was that belief created, right? Created in your own mind. Fear is a belief that you created most likely because of the past, something in your past didn't work. Somebody told you you wouldn't be good enough. Somebody told you you didn't deserve it. The, so the fear is actually created by a belief in your past. And it causes us to worry or have anxiety about something in the future. What if it don't work out? What if it don't go? Now, what that drives is two things, nervousness or anxiety, and it drives worry, okay? Worry creates dis-ease, D-I-S-E-A-S-E, dis-ease, I'm not at ease, okay? The number one killer of people in the United States is stress. That's the number one thing that kills people in the United States, stress. It's disease created from stress. Where does stress come? From fear. Fear creates worry and it creates anxiety, okay? Anxiety is nervousness, okay? Nervousness. Now, the reason this is important is because there's two ways that people, people respond when they're afraid of something. One way, if you study psychology, is they, they fight, or they fly, right? They, they, they flee, I'm gonna use another word, they contract, or they expand, okay? And you, this is the real decision you gotta make right now, okay? This is a real decision you got, and only you can make this decision. During this cycle, are you gonna contract, or are you gonna expand? Now, when I say the word expand, I'm not meaning spend more money necessarily, uh, although it could be valuable. You may need to spend money during this period, like for example, I bought it, we, we purchased an, a, a software just this week that helps us take everybody that comes in my Zooms and put them in our CRM system, right? That's a good expense because it, it solves a problem, okay? You, right, last week I, I signed a deal with a media company out of New York City to get me a book deal. I'm spending money, there's an expansion there. I'm moving forward. I'm planning events for the fall. We're about to release our fall retreats. So what you should be doing is, is you got to make up your mind that during this period, you're going to contract, which means retreat, sit, hold, do nothing, hope it all works out, or you're going to expand. And in my opinion, there, there, there's really, you really got no option here. You need to be expanding during this period. And if your business is too, too dependent on that one flow of income, you need to be thinking about what, what would be a secondary flow of income right now? What would be a secondary way to make money? So this is the mindset, offense, all offense, all the time. Now, if you're leading a company, this is one of the number one things you can understand right now and tell people, we're on offense. We're gonna create leads, we're gonna call on people, we're gonna hit our current client base, we're gonna hit our past client base, we're gonna stimulate on social media. Like, we're gonna take everything we're doing, we're gonna put it on steroids, and we're gonna push. It's a mindset of offense versus defense, okay? Now, when you think about fear as a motivator, I want you to start thinking about these activators of prey drive. Okay, so, so when you, all of you who've heard me speak, talk about prey drive. Prey drive is an instinctual inclination to see something with the eyes or in the mind and have the, the intensity, the, the intensity and the persistence to go get it. 
Okay, that's prey drive. Well, guess what? One of, number, one of the number one activators of prey drive is fear. It's actually the second activator. Fear of what? Fear of loss. Fear of losing something. Fear of missing out. Fear of it not working out. So this is how we start to use fuel. We, act, we actually start to use fear as our fuel versus as, as something that's holding us back. So activators of prey drive, competition. How many of you, when, when, you, when your back's against the wall, you come out swinging? <laughs> right? So, 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 let, let, so what, what happens if your back hadn't been against the wall in three months or six months or nine months and your prey drive has been suppressed? See, the number one epidemic we're facing in the country, in my opinion, is, is complacency. See, what we're doing now, all the Facebooks, all the lives, all the webinars, all the pushes, all the calls, we really should have been doing 90 days ago. We should have been doing it six months ago. We should have been doing it one year ago. These are things you ought to be doing all the time in your business, right? Because we go to bed tired, we wake up hungry. So the first activator of prey drive is competition. Right now, this is a competition. Who's going to win? Who's going to lose? Who's going to make it? Who's not going to make it? Who's going to find a way to win? Who's going to give up? Who's the pretenders? Who's the contenders, right? Make it a game, okay? Make it a game. I, I want to see my salespeople just, just sell something every day, man. Just sell something every day. Just get, just get in the mindset of hitting it every day, okay? Now, so what are you competing against? Your own potential, other people in the market. I was just coaching an insurance guy who's in our 25K level. He said, coach, I've had two of the biggest weeks of my career. We got another insurance guy who just said, I have, I've recruited more agents during this period than any other time I've been an insurance agent. One of our agents that we're coaching is doing so well that the company asked him to do webinars for everybody because he's expanding during this cycle. He's doing a virtual summit tonight to pitch, it, to pitch his product or ser uh, uh, service. 289 people signed up for that summit. Now, he couldn't take 289 one-to-one -one meetings, okay? But he could take one webinar and have 289 people on there. So he would have never even thought about doing the virtual summit. He was going door to door, knocking door to door, meeting people door to door, one door at a time, one person at a time. Now he's doing, now he's, now he's going to knock on 289 doors at one time. Okay. And out of that, 16% of people are interested. Now he's got a farm club of people to follow up with. So first activator prey drives competition. And I tell people, if you ain't got, if your prey drive is not activated now, guess what? You ain't got no prey drive. <laughs> if it ain't activated during this period, you ain't got none. Okay. We can't even reach down there and grab it out of you. Right, Sean Vernon? If somebody's not ready to fight now, then, then they got some real serious problems, okay, that we probably can't solve on this one-hour coaching call. Now, so when you think about it, number two activator is fear of loss, which is what we're talking about today. Number three activator is environment. If you're leading a team right now, how important is it that you create an environment, whether it be a virtual environment or whether it be, whether it be an online environment, which is virtual, whether it be in person, like we're still working out of our office every day. How important is it that you set the tone the speed of the leader, the speed of the pack. How important is it that you create an environment of high prey drive? We're still making 80 phone calls a day uh, from our salespeople. We're still working the selling system. We're still banging on people. We're still pushing people. Now, I said this on yesterday's webinar, but I want to remove this. Many people out there have a consideration. And a consideration would be uh, Pam and David White in Texas saying this, well, nobody's buying a house right now. There's no way in the world during the middle of this, during the middle of this, anybody's going to buy a house. There's no way in the world. See, that's one side of the coin. That's a consideration. There could be, a con the other consideration could be, hey, everybody stop. They're thinking. They don't like the house they're living in. They're looking online. They got more time than they did. Actually, this may be the best time to sell somebody a house. Everybody, everybody see where I'm going with this? A consideration is you are looking at this with a hesitation because you've made up your mind from the past that something ain't going to work. I have not changed my selling strategy at all during this cycle. If I get on the phone with the person, I still ask them, are you ready to take action? What would prohibit you from moving? This is the best time in the world you need a coach. Okay, a guy this morning told me, you know, I'm, getting, I'm afraid of getting laid off, coach. I'm scared to death. Make sense. You know what I said? Best time in the world for you to have a coach because there's nobody in the world better at protecting your confidence than me. I've studied confidence for the last 28 years. Okay, during this cycle, your confidence is going to go low. Now, you need, you want... You want a champion in your corner or you won't go at this alone, big guy. Okay. So during this cycle, don't think that I've changed anything as it relates to the way that I share my services, pitch my services, work my selling system, any of those things. Okay. So number three, activator prey drive is what? Environment. What environments are you in? Where are you getting your data from? Who are you listening to right now? Who are you talking to? Who's feeding your mind? Okay. This is very important. Who's coaching you right now? Okay, 
because, because I'm telling you, people can go out into the world and hear all kinds of things and come in the next day completely demotivated. Number four, activate or pray drive is exposure. Exposure. Okay. And what I mean by exposure is, is I'm exposed to something. I did a webinar with a high end luxury real estate guy just a minute ago and a franchise owner of black tie moving. And I took three pages of notes of things that I, that, that they didn't say anything unique or special. They just said things that got me thinking. And I wrote down who's all the power players I need to be connected to right now. How can we pick up additional money through affiliates, secondary flows of income? How can we create digital assets that produce money right now during this period through e-commerce, right? How do, we, how do we think about who we need to, like the whole time I was just sitting there thinking, just listen to these webinars, get your thinking, right? Cause you're exposed to something. What's coach Burke doing? What is Steve Hotze doing? What is big time people doing during this cycle? I guarantee you they ain't contracted. Look at the top five people you know right now and see if they're contracting. Okay, what, 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 what are they doing during this cycle? Okay, I want you to look at them and watch what they're doing. You know what Dave Ramsey was doing in 2008? When everybody was freaking out, he was buying millions and millions of dollars of real estate at a discounted price. Yesterday I was buying stock in two banks and a long-term healthcare facility because I think that stock's gonna go up. This is a time of, a time of attack. So if you tell me you can't make any money during this period is, is there an incorrect assumption on your part. That is a consideration. All right, what about this one? Number five, it's very important. I went back this morning and uh, I was watching a sermon on how to change your mind about anxiety and fear uh, from a guy named Jimmy Evans, who's one of my favorite pastors out of Amarillo, Texas. And he's talking about this concept of fear. Like he changed at some point in his life, he just changed his mind about anxiety, about fear. If you study the Bible, the number one commandment throughout the Bible, more than anything in the world, is do not fear. More than any other line, do not fear, do not fear, do not fear. And he was talking about this concept that one day he, he was just meditating and he just changed his mind about fear and anxiety. He, 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 right? He changed his mind about being anxious about anything. Changed his mind about worrying about anything. Just like, boom, just like that. And when I think about inspiration from others, that's an activator of prey drive. What are you watching every morning when you get up? Are you turning on CNN and watching CNN for 30 or 45 minutes? Because if you do, you'll have the guns out and ready to lock yourself up, right? <laughs> okay. Or, or are, you, are you watching somebody who's keeping you in a forward position on how to go play offense? So I start my day off with a sermon every single morning, and, and I've been typing in specific words, how to handle anxiety and fear how to build enthusiasm during this period, how to create sales during unprecedented times, how to build stronger networks during this cycle. So for you, the fifth activator of your prey drive is inspired by others. Now, why am I telling you these activators of prey drive? How many of you believe that you can use these activators of prey drive to sell to another person? Okay, and I want you to think of it like this. I understand the disc profile and the disc profile tells me what are high motivators of people, what do they need? Like a high C needs assurance, more information, more data, testimonials. A high D wants options, okay? They want you to be uh, precise when you pitch your services. Well, I would tell you if I had a test for people, a prey drive test, then I would tell you that um, if, I, if I had a prey drive test, then the test would tell me which activator would activate your prey drive during this period, right? Which, which, which one would activate your prey drive during this period? Okay, that's what the test would tell me. Now, the reason I'm telling you this is because when you really get this concept and you're trying to sell to a person, you can use all five of these. Competition, hey, so-and-so's getting in. Why are you not in? Everybody's getting in right now. This is the best time to get in. It's competition. Hey, this is a game. Let's see how many things you can sell in the next 30 days right? That's competition. Number two, fear of loss. Hey, I wake up, we go to bed tired, we wake up hungry. It all goes to zero at midnight. Number three, environment. Hey, get, get around these people. Be on the webinar with us. Do this. Get excited. Exposure. I'm going to show you how to do this during this cycle. I turn this fear into cash. How many of you think you got more stimulus right now than you've ever had to sell something? Raise your hand. <clears throat> yeah. So let me ask you a question. Are you turning your fear into action? Of course you are. So, so, so is it a bad thing or a good thing? Because some of you are making more sales calls than you've ever made. You're talking to your clients more than you've ever talked to them. You're pushing out more on social media than you ever have. You got a fighting spirit that you didn't have, right? 
you, you, you don't have a timid spirit. You got a fighting spirit. And you didn't have that 90 days ago. Okay. So, so what happened is this is actually stimulating your mind to go, okay, where can we win right now? It's forced me to look at what underutilized products do I have? What services are we not offering? How can we build a value ladder to get people in the door to get exposed to our product or service? Okay, and I'm gonna talk about that in just a second. All right, now I'm gonna stop right there and I'm gonna call on a person, Sean Vernon. Now you, you've been in the coaching program now for what, maybe 30 days if that? And what is this, how do you see your ability to turn this, turn fear, your, the fear that you have, and may not have any fear, I may be assuming here, and, and turn it into cash. Uh, so, yeah, you're assuming. Uh, so as, as of now, I'm, I'm, uh, I, I think it's is actually, uh, I'm more driven than ever. Um, I appreciate, by the way, coach, um, I'm, I, I haven't regretted at all the decision to be part of your coaching program. I think it's been fantastic. And, uh, you know, I'm looking at what we're doing right now as an opportunity to focus on the things that we're talking about um, on, on these calls. And I mean, for, you know, everyone always said, I don't have time to do X. I don't have time to do Y. And now I feel like we have all this time and utilizing it to focus on all these projects and things to strengthen our business and strengthen what we do, uh, has been extremely powerful and helpful. And I'm just trying to do my best to encourage people who are afraid to use that fear, channel it, work on their mindset and step up and push out because the world's going to need people like us to move it forward. That's, that's how I'm looking at things. Now, explain to people what your business model is so they can fully understand this. So I'm in the, uh, so I'm in the solar industry, um, and I've always fully believed in solar. Um, I've always wanted to elevate my status and take more of uh, getting into coaching and getting into developing others. It's something I feel like I do very well when it comes to developing salespeople and entrepreneurs. Um, to me, solar is the biggest no-brainer in the history of no-brainers, and I think that people should be doing it, and they aren't. Um, and I believe that right now, when there's a lot of uncertainty, having certainty, knowing what their bills are going to be every month, knowing that they're going to have energy, whether, you know, clean energy, knowing that they get to invest value into their home without putting any money down. I think all of these things are more important than ever. And I think that just to install one solar project puts so many people to work and every project that every one of my people sells is putting probably 20 people to work. Uh, it's all very, very powerful. And I think that clean energy is going to be a big part of the future. Um, and I'm, I'm just excited and passionate to be ready to take advantage of that once we're all allowed to leave our houses. Now, are, are, do, do you know, because a big part of their model is door to door. I want everybody to hear this and understand. Okay. A big part of their model is selling door to door. Okay. So Each your one. adjustment during this cycle is what? Um, I've, I've been moving towards virtual presentations. So uh, trying to make people feel more at ease and, saying, hey, listen, we don't have to come to your house to do this. We can get you in front of your computer. You don't have a lot going on. You want to hear what we have to say. It still takes, it's going to take several months to get you to go solar. So for right now, let's get you on a webinar and let's, let's walk through it. And, uh, you know, leads and appointments are obviously very challenging. And so I'm implementing uh, a lot of what you, what you talk about in terms of trying to get the top 25, trying to get referrals, checking in on our customers, um, and doing everything we can to generate leads and appointments and sales have slowed. Um, but we're finding ways to continue to move projects forward and gain new business. And that's what we're, that's what we're doing. All right, good. Now I want to bring up some key points here, uh, from, from Sean, because there's some big lessons here. The brain makes decisions when it's relaxed. If you study the brain, okay, the brain makes big decisions when the neocortex gets involved. Okay, and for the neocortex to be involved, it has to be in a relaxed state. Okay, now this is, a, this is very important because for him to sell his solar, this is a time that many people are at home, they've slowed down, they're evaluating, their mind is at like, I think like three days that I was, I was out last week, I, was, I, had, I had more time to think, my mind was more relaxed. Actually, people were calling on me during that period to sell me things. I had previously because I was so busy, pushed them off. They got my attention, right? And during that cycle, they got to articulate their value to me because my mind was relaxed. Okay. This is the reason people buy real estate on the weekends. It's the reason people make big decisions on the weekends when their mind is relaxed or at night. It's the reason they don't make big decisions right in the middle of the day when they're busy and they're going. So my argument for Sean would be, this may be the best time, although you can't go door to door and do it, this may be the best time to get a person's attention, 
I like the point about saying we have to solve a problem. Money changes hands when problems are solved. If I could show you how you could have a consistent bill every month that you can anticipate and budget for, would you sit down and listen to it? Would you be open to it? Now, he also said something that I've been hearing a lot is, well, we can't get people on the phone. And I was coaching an insurance company this morning and they said, coach, our people are in good spirits. They're showing up every day. They're trying to sell, but they can't get people on the phone. Okay. And people ask me, how do you get people on the phone? Well, I use a lot of different tactics. Okay. Phone call, text message, voice text, video. Also, I use short videos or short, what I call hype videos to send them. And I go, Hey, watch this. And then let's talk. Many times I'll say, Hey man, I'm available right now. You got a few minutes. I'll text them that little text message. And, and do you have a few minutes to talk right now? Okay. And many times people go, yeah, go ahead and call me right now. So, so if you're not getting people on the phone, what's really happening is they're putting you in a low status position. And what you have to do is figure out a way to elevate your status. Now I elevate my status through energy, excitement, enthusiasm. Okay. The hype videos that I send, Hey, watch this. Hey, I talked to you yesterday. Hey, so-and-so told me to reach out to you and I just keep going. Okay. I just keep going. If they tell me it's not a good time to talk, I just, I just act like I didn't even hear them. <laughs> so when I call on a person, if I call on Nate, Nate Witzman, and, and, and I don't even ask if it's a good time to talk. Nate said, man, I'm really busy. I called on a lawyer this morning. He said he's on the phone. Could he call me back? But he ain't called me back yet. So what I'll do after I get off the theaters is, hey, man, that's been the longest phone call I've ever heard of. <laughs> You've been on the phone since 10 o'clock this morning? Must be real important. Hey, when you going to hit me back? So what I do is I, is I use, I don't, I don't, I control the situation. I don't let them control it. Okay. So let's flip the script. Maybe the best time in the world to sell your products or services. You got to get people on the phone by being creative and being persistent. There is no shortage of money. There is no shortage of opportunity. There's a shortage of creativity. There's a shortage of courage. There's a shortage of confidence. I'm only looking for the people that are looking for me. Okay. And if you don't think that, that there's money out there to be made right now, I've been on the phone today and yesterday with a guy worth a hundred million dollars. I was on the phone earlier this week, a guy probably worth 20 to $40 million. Okay. I've been connecting to all my big players right now. I've been, I've been getting counsel from some of the top financial experts in the world, people that are managing $6 billion. What's going on? What are they doing? What do I need to be doing? Like this is a perfect time to be extracting information from the biggest people in the world on what their strategies are. Okay. Now let's go back to our concept. So we got our five motivators. We're turning fear into cash. Well, when you understand those five motivators, you can use those like me directly challenging that gentleman this morning is a very important point. Most people, uh, Amanda Banks and Marty Reichenthal, most people, when, when that guy said, well, I'm scared, I'm nervous. I don't know what's going to happen. I may lose my job. They would have said, okay, I understand. Um, you know, when you get through this little time of your life, then call me back. Coach Burt would never do that in a million years. I said, I understand that you're from a place of fear. Matter of fact, I knew he was afraid when I got on the phone with him. So I said, you know what I was talking about in my meeting this morning? Fear. You know what fear is? Fear is an unpleasant emotion created by belief that somebody's going to harm us in the future. Fear creates worry and anxiety. Worry creates disease. More people die in the United States of, of stress created by fear and worry and anxiety than any other thing in the world. And, and that opened the door for him to go, yeah, that's right, coach. That's good. And then I kept on going. And then he said, well, here's my concern. I said, I understand but I wouldn't be doing my job as one of the top coaches in the country if I, didn't, if I didn't come back with an argument. I said, you may not be able to take the package that I positioned to you. You may be too afraid to move there, but I got a $49 a month package. And that gets you on a Monday call with me every week. That gets you my online academy, right? That you can get started in. And it gets you not the full robust piece, but it gets you a, a key part to get you started. Now, you think you could do 49 a week. And let me ask you a question. You think your life would be better or worse with me in it? You think your confidence would be higher or lower with me being your coach? Do you think, right? Do you think you'd be in good hands with me or bad hands with me? He said, no, nope, I need you. I said, okay, I'm going to send you this link and, and let's go ahead and get you started in that. That's a great way to start, right? Now, notice what most people would have done. Most people would have said, okay, I understand when you get through this cycle of life, call me back. I'm going to follow up with you. Listen, it's called the challenger. If you're an expert and you've had a big revelation and you have conviction and you have taken action and you've worked the muscle for a long cycle and you have a high degree of certainty that you can help people, you're doing yourself a disjustice and them if you let them off the hook when they're scared. 
They're scared. You're an expert. You're supposed to know what you're doing. And, and part of your job of no matter what you sell is you're selling confidence. Just, I don't care. Like I got people from all, all industries on this call. I would simply say this. You think your life's going to be better off 60, 90 days from today with me in it or worse off? Oh, it's going to be better off. Okay, then. Well, we need to get started with you because we can't help you till you commit. Once you commit, we're not going to let you fail. And that's a very important part. You got to have these things to say to convert. Now, I may start there and I want to introduce the concept on how to help people make a decision in times of fear. I have all different types of products. I got a download for a book for $9.99. I got a YouTube channel that's got thousands of, of videos on it. I got a Facebook page. I'm doing lives every day. I got an Instagram where they can follow me. I got a, I got a $67 deal. I got a $49 a month deal. I got a $99 a month deal, all the way up to $100,000 deal. Now, why is this important? Right now, I believe every person on this call needs a low entry to something. Okay. And if you study the value ladder, the value ladder is, okay, I pitched you this, but you're scared to take that. So why don't we start here? This gets you in the game. This gets you started. This gets you in a, a forward position. This lets you taste the goods a little bit. This lets you, right? Like, 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 so what I have is I have this value ladder, a low ticketed item to get people started. Okay. And, and, it, and it doesn't have to be a ticket. It could be a free thing. Let's do a free consult. I'm doing a webinar on Thursday night, like my guy tonight in insurance. I mean, I'm proud of him for taking these concepts. I'm proud of him for taking my concepts, the showcase, and he's doing a webinar tonight for 289 people. Now, he may not sell one thing off that webinar, but do you think he's closer to selling something after he does an hour of coaching versus not even talking to those people, right or wrong? See, he's much closer to selling something after he gets in front of them for an hour than he was before. They had no awareness. Now they have an awareness. So the webinar is like a low ticketed item or a free item for people to jump on, get to spend a little bit of time with you and let them make their assessments. All right. Now, this okay. So, so this is very important. So where's my Amanda Banks at? I'm going to call on her. Amanda, can you talk right now? I can talk, yeah, if you don't mind kid and dog in the background. <laughs> All right, good. Hey, I've already had that one time today in one of my webinars, a dog barking and the birds chirping and who, who, <laughs> who knows what else everybody's got. Now, what are you, what are you taking away from this concept right now? What can you use? What can you use during this cycle that I'm talking about turning this fear, which is an emotion created by a belief that something's going to harm us in the future. We're spending valuable time right now, worrying about the future creates worry, creates anxiety, creates disease, disease creates right problems for the body. What, can, what, what are you taking so far that you can do that you weren't doing? Yeah, I think that as a previous competitive athlete, you know, the whole competition factor and being able to shift the mindset into a clear focus okay. um, has been very helpful for me. Okay. So now you feel like you're using this time and you got better clarity, better clarity of thought, better clarity of action, no, uh, get, creating a good game plan, right? Absolutely. And we've show, we've shifted our focus a little bit on the things that we can control. So we do a lot of work in the healthcare market, but we have a focus right now on identifying and selecting a partner network, which is something that we can control right now and getting through the contractual phase with some of these folks. It's allowed us the opportunity to get that time with them to help speed up that process. All right, good. Now, when you think about this, thank you, Amanda. When you think about this, let's say I'm calling on um, Paul Van Neville and I, Paul Van Neville's indicated interest in my product or service. He's in my farm club. I'm going seven touches with him. And let's say Paul tells me, coach, I've cut all spending. I'm only, I'm only spending money on essential things right now. I may joke with him and say, hey, ain't nothing more essential than your mindset. Ain't, ain't nothing more essential than me helping you protect your confidence. Ain't nothing more essential than your attack. Okay, I may joke with him and go back and forth. I understand you're saying uh, essential is, you know, food, water, whatever the case may be. But I'm not going to let him off the hook and say, okay, hey, no worries. Hey, that's not a wasted phone call when I call Paul and I engage with him and plant a seed. Paul, when you get through this, I'm going to be right here with you. In the meantime, I'm going to send you something. Don't miss this, guys. The guy this morning that was scared, here's what I did. I said, I'm going to send you my book on swag. On, on confidence. I'm going to send you the audio. I want you to listen to all of this. 
audio. I'm also going to send you a link that has my $49 a month program in it that you can go ahead and get started in. And I'm going to be right there with you as you fight through this. And he will remember that I fought through this with him, but I gave him, I gave him something. Everybody see that? Then I'm going to push him to something in the future. Hey, in April, I'm going to be doing this, 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 and this. I want you to come sit in on something. All I'm doing is working the ladder, working the value ladder. I'm not stopping. Start here. Let's move him here. Let's get him involved here. I don't know when his, his, uh, his trigger event's going to be. All I know is I need to stay in his face. Like during that last webinar I was on, I wrote down like 10 people that I needed to be sending these webinars and replays to. Prospects that I haven't closed. People that have indicated interest. You know, like you need to be feeding people right now more and more and more content. Do not contract during this cycle. You need to move forward. Now, how many of you, Stephanie, I'm going to call on you. Stephanie's up in Pittsburgh, PA, right? Now, who are you selling to uh, so everybody understands? Yeah, we sell to hospitals and healthcare systems, and we primarily focus on labor optimization and productivity improvement. So we have the right person, the right place at the right time for the right clinical outcomes so that they can continue to deliver on their mission of high quality care. Even though a lot of our clients and hospitals probably need us more than ever right now, we're having a hard time getting them on the phone and actually taking the phone call. Yep. So we've pivoted a little bit right now and we're trying to push out as much content as we possibly can just to build brand recognition and awareness. So we actually pulled together, I think you had answered one of Brian's calls earlier this week, and we pulled together a quick virtual mastermind today and go. had five industry experts on it. So we're going to push that out to prospects via YouTube uh, so that they can actually see that news as a vehicle to get in front of them and hopefully start to get some attention. So when we come out of this, we can blow up, but yep. we're struggling with getting people on the phone or even getting them to respond to anything. Yeah. So when they're in the current of the urgent, when people are in the current of the urgent, they just can't think, right? They're, they're, they're just surviving. They're in survival mode. Well, the neocortex is not involved during that period. They're, they're, they're busy. Their mind is busy. They're, they're preoccupied. So it's hard to sell a person something when their mind's like that. So my strategy is volume. Okay. Volume. Okay. How do I, how do I run through a lot of volume? Cause that's why we're making 80 phone calls a day. It's very important. Because out of the 80, we're going to catch somebody at the right time. We're going to catch somebody who said, thank you for calling me. We're going to catch somebody. If I'm only making four phone calls, right? In her industry, they're saying, don't call me, right? So, so she's pivoting and saying, hey, let me create some valuable content. So you may need this. Money changes hands when problems are solved. You got to go back to solving problems versus selling a product or service, guys. And you got to keep pivoting. You got to keep pivoting. Now, you know, one of the interesting things that we're doing right now is we partnered to create a publishing division of my company where people that want to write their own book or write their first book, we, we bring, a, uh, we bring a, a person in that helps you write the book, package the book, put the book up. Guess what? People at home, it's one of the best times in the world for them to write their book. So we've had all kinds of people saying this, I've been wanting to write a book. And I'm like, great, we got a publishing division. We're going to introduce you to our key guy who helps write the book, package the book. Puts the book. Now, if we can create revenue from that through an affiliate with him, through a partnership with him, now we're producing revenue through a stream that is more viable. Okay. We're, 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 so, so think about these concepts of, of uh, producing money through partnerships. Hey, we can do this. We offer this. Let me introduce you to this. It's not just, hey, this is the only way I can make money. And if it's not working, I'm in trouble. We need that diversification. Okay. So you need a low ticket to get started or something for free. Okay, look at the webinars I'm doing. We get people on here for free. We get them in the door. It's like getting them in the door, right? Let's get them in the door. Okay, then we can create value. Then we create leads. Then we create opportunity. You need various products. You don't need to be relying on one product. You need multiple products right now. Number three, you need to be planting the seed of momentum. I'm about to release my fall events. I want people to know I'm moving. I'm planning. I'm creating. I'm not stuck. I'm not stagnant. I'm not giving up. I'm in there fighting every single day. Okay, I'm in there pushing every single day. So you need this positive momentum. Okay, now our sales cycle is real simple. We, and we teach this in our coaching program. I believe selling comes down to one thing, initiating. Initiating. So, so what we're doing right now is we're initiating. Phone calls, email, text message, social media, follow-ups, top 25. Okay, we're initiating. That's the first step of the sales cycle. And then we're disarming or building connection. We're connecting with people. 
Step three is we're locating a problem, a significant problem. And some people's got A problem, B problem, C problem. Okay, good. Here's what I recommend you do. It may not be to sell them something right then. It may be to say, hey, go to this. Let me send you something on this. Let me send you my book on this, right? So step three is I got to locate a significant problem. And step four is got to offer a compelling solution. I got to offer a compelling solution. Okay, now if I don't have a compelling solution or if they say this is good, but I'm not making a decision, then we just keep that follow up going. We're going to keep following up. We're going to keep staying in your mind. We're going to stay at the top of your brain. We're going to keep working until we find a deal. We're going to find money somewhere like, right? Like we're going to find it. Okay. Now, if you get creative, I started thinking too, I was telling Eric White on my team, um, one of the things Trump came out with that I thought was genius, only a businessman would think like this, is that if we bail some of the major companies out, government gets a piece of equity in the company. Now, no politician in a million years would ever think like that, right or wrong. <laughs> but he's saying if we bail Royal Caribbean out and, and, and we get a piece of their, of their company at a low share price and that share price comes up, the government gets the difference. Now we turn around and pay off the, the deficit with the, with, the, with the upside. That's a genius thing to do. Now, here's what I started thinking. What's my version of that? Let's say somebody comes to me but can't afford the coaching, but they know they need the coaching to go to the next level. I could say, hey, I'll be happy to coach you right now for a piece of equity in your company, right? And so we got to think of different ways. Now, we also have to be, now here, here, here's a concept. Don't miss this. We went to, to uh, another state not long ago to, to, to spend a day with the person and Obviously, what we want to do is build relationship, build rapport, try to build, try to see where the need is, where we could locate the need. And I walked out of there and was talking to him. And, and then he said, hey, send me that, that vision for your greatness factory. And um, he said, because I'm really interested in that greatness factory concept. And he was a big time guy, right? Big, big time guy, wealthy guy. And I was talking to him about explaining the vision. And I said, this, you know, this greatness factory is probably three and a half, four million dollar uh, project and, and, and he said oh just 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 three and a half four million bucks he's like man that's that's a little baby money right like that's a little bitty project now here's what's interesting I didn't go to sell him that okay I didn't go to push him to that I didn't I wasn't even thinking about that when I went it's the concept of we got to get in the game to find out where the opportunity is once we get in the game, there could be a door open over here or a door open over here or a door open over here or a door open over here. We don't know which door is going to be open, but we need multiple doors. Okay. It could be, Hey, I want you to do this. I want you to do this. I want you, and I may send people ideas like this is a plan for you. And they may go, I don't like that plan. And I come back and I go, what about this plan? And I just keep going till I find something that works for them. But if you only got one plan and you don't have any diversity in that plan, you don't have different products in that plan then when you locate a problem, you don't really have a solution. Okay. The other thing I have figured out during this cycle, and then I'm going to take any questions you have is that when a person wants something bad enough, um, they make emotional decisions. They don't make rational decisions. If they want something, they're going to do it. Okay. If they want it bad enough. Okay. For all my real estate agents on here, if they want a house, there ain't nothing you can do to talk them out of buying that house once they decide they want it. I don't care what time of year it is. Hey, show it to me via show it to me via virtual tour. Show it to me on the pictures. Once their mind locks in, is I want that. Okay, boom, they're gonna go find it. Okay, so so what you got to do is keep presenting ideas, keep presenting opportunity. Hey, I know I showed you this, but you didn't like it. What about this? Hey, I know I showed you this, but you didn't like it. What about this? I'm about to go back to all the people in my pipeline, take some of these video footage, send it to them, and go watch this. How to starve out. How to turn fear into cash. Okay. So let's finish up with this. The follow up and the pivot. I'm going to initiate today. If you haven't been initiating, shame on you. If you've been sitting around licking your wounds, shame on you. This ain't a period to do that. This is a period all hands on deck. We come out fighting every day. We're going to get in the game. We're going to call as many people as we can. We're going to present as many ideas as we can. Okay. Once we locate a significant problem, we're going to offer a solution. If they don't like that solution, we're going to bring them another solution. And we're going to keep going until we put something in front of their face that they go, okay, I'm interested or I'm not interested. Okay. And if they don't buy today, maybe they buy at some point in the future. Okay. But you have to be the expert right here and you got to fight for this. Now, let me close it with this fear. What if I told you my number one activator, of my prey drive was fear. 
right? Fear of loss. And let me tell you why that's an activator for me. I've worked 25 years to build the life that I have, to live in the house that I live in, to have the vacation properties I have, okay? To have the airplane I fly around on. The last thing I want to do is go back to the, to the way I used to be, <laughs> living in a little one bedroom or two bedroom apartment, right? So, so if that means I told my wife, if I got to get up at three o'clock in the morning and work till midnight, that's what we're going to do during this period. If I got to make more calls, that's what we're going to do during this period. We're going to do whatever it takes to continue unless you want to go back to that old way of living. And I don't think you do. So what we got to figure out is how do we produce revenue during this cycle? And because fear of loss is my number one activator, I actually think it is the number one driver that creates action. Now you can say that's a negative vision. I tell you, I don't care. I don't care what your activator of your prey drive is. Competition, fear of loss, exposure, don't matter to me. I just need the, act, the prey drive activated and I need you to think like this. I've looked at liabilities my whole life and somehow I figured out a way to turn those liabilities into assets. I've learned how to look at something and, and nine out of 10 people would tell me don't do it. Don't buy that property. Don't purchase that. Because the way they're looking at it, they can't figure out how to make money with it. The way I'm looking at it is I will find a way to make money with this liability. I will turn this liability into an asset. That's the mindset you got to have. And there's probably only one out of every 10 people that have that mindset, guys. I'm going to take something that other people don't think is that valuable, and I'm going to create revenue from it. I don't know how yet but I'm going to find a way, right? I'm going to find a way. So you got to, you got to make up your mind during this cycle. You're going to use any fear that you have of losing fear of missing out fear, whatever, whatever the fear is. And you're going to use it to, to get motivated every single day. And you're going to do more than you've ever done. You're going to produce and we get through this and we will, you're going to be proud of yourself that you found a new muscle that you hadn't worked in a long time. You're going to be so much stronger and so much better and so much more powerful in your business than you are today. Okay. Any questions that you guys have for me? Now, we're going to give you some things from this webinar. We're going to give you my uh, a book on confidence, on swag during this cycle. We're going to give you the e-version, the e-book version. We're going to give you the replay of this. We're going to give you the interview that I did with Dr. Hotze. Uh, we're going to give you all of these things just for jumping on here today. So you're going to get those automatically from us. Uh, I will tell you the best thing I've got for all the people who are not, who are not clients of mine right now is the online academy. That allows you to get trained every single day by me. Uh, imagine me moving in with you, uh, right? Uh, imagine me moving in with you and being there every morning for you to train an online academy. They get you the Monday calls with me. I mean, to me, this is a perfect time to train and skill up, right? Skill yourself up during this period in an online academy. So we got Lakin Hibden, Lakin at coachbert.com is on here with us, okay? She's going to type it for you so you don't screw it up. It's not Lincoln. Or Laker, people all the time mess their name up, right? And, and by the way, I'm looking, okay, so, so Lakin. And then we got Eric at CoachBird.com. If you work with any of those, they'd be happy to help you with that online academy. Get yourself trained during this period, man. It's the time to work the muscle, okay? So use this fear to turn it into fuel. Open your mind. I got pages of things I got to get to. I got pages of people I got to follow up with. I got collateral I got to use. But use this time as a good time to, to continue to produce revenue for your company. Fair enough? All right. Thank you, guys. It's been a good day. Okay. If you have those monster, what are you saying? If you have those monster producer shirts for sale, I will buy one. You got it. Thank you for that. We'll send you a monster producer shirt. You better believe it. Hey, I'll sell you the shirt off my back right now if you want to buy it. <laughs> Oh, all right, guys. Thank you very much for joining. You guys are awesome. Love you.